So hopefully you've had a chance now to work through uh, the examples above in the Markdown document. Uh, you're comfortable building a mixed model for a factorial design, um, running EM means comparisons if the interaction is significant in order to understand what's driving that interaction effect. Uh, and perhaps you've also had a chance to build the generalized mixed model um, using the gamma distribution. So we're going to move on now and uh, in this section and in the next section we're going to look at how we build generalized mixed models for outcome variables that are binomial. In other words when our dependent variable is just a 1 or a 0. Uh, and in the final uh, video we're going to look at building models where our dependent variable is measured on an ordinal scale as might be the case if you've used some sort of Likert type scale to collect your data. So in the context of the uh, binomial uh, model that we're going to build, um, my own research area, eye movement research, typically will have a set of measures uh, that are measured using ones and zeros. So in addition to measuring eye movements as people read, what we also do is measure whether or not they reread um, a previously encountered section of text. So these types of uh, eye movements when people go back to read something uh, that they read earlier are known as eye movement regressions and they're coded in our data set as being a 1 or a 0 with 1 corresponding to somebody rereading a particular region of text uh, and a 0 corresponding to them not rereading that particular region of text. So if we were to look at a data set of these eye movement regressions, we'd see that our dependent variable is either a 1 or a 0. So here's uh, some data from a study I published a few years ago where we have people's uh, eye movement regressions during reading. Uh, they had to read sentences that conveyed uh, three different types of meaning. Negative meaning, uh, neutral meaning, or positive meaning. And for each sentence, we measured whether people did or did not make a regressive eye movement to reread something that they had read previously. So our dependent variable is coded as a 0 or a 1. And we can use the uh, structure function just to check the structure of our data set. And it's, it's exactly as we're expecting. So we can look at the first uh, six rows of our data set if we want to. Uh, and then we can also calculate some summary uh, descriptive statistics as well. So we're taking our data set, tidy regressions data, and then we're grouping it by condition, and we're working out the mean, in other words, the average for a dependent variable, and the standard deviation. So we can see here the three means uh, are relatively similar to each other. So uh, we might, on the basis of the descriptive statistics, think that maybe we're not going to be finding too much of a difference between these three experimental conditions. Uh, but we need to build our model to determine whether or not that's the case. So rather than build a linear mixed model, we're going to build what's known as a generalized linear mixed model using the GLMER function. So in contrast to just using LMER, we're going to use the GLMER function uh, in the LME4 package. Uh, it works exactly the same as LMER, expect, except that we have to specify uh, the family, uh, distributional family that our data are being sampled from. And in this case, our data are binary, they're ones and zeros, so you specify the family uh, that we're sampling from as being binomial. Okay, so other than that, everything's pretty much the same. So we're going to build our generalized mixed model where our dependent variable is predicted by condition and we're going to try and model random effects of subjects and items with both random intercepts and random slopes uh, and as I said we're also specifying the family as being binomial but if we were to try and build this model and run it we'd get uh, a convergence error uh, it's the same sort of error that we uh, found in the previous video uh, which indicates that the uh, number of parameters that we're trying to estimate in our model uh, can't be done on the basis of the richness or lack of richness uh, in the data set that we actually have. So we need to simplify a random effect structure. And this is one of those cases where actually 
we have to specify or we have to simplify the random effect structure structure to a huge extent in order to be able to find a model that fits our data. So we end up dropping our items random effects term entirely, and we end up with a subject random effects term where we're simply modeling um, at random intercepts for each subject. So this is one of those cases where we have an intercept only random effects term, which if we were to find significant effects could well be a false positive. Because this term here, if you think back to the mixed models part one workshop, assumes that the magnitude of the effect is going to be the same across all of our participants. All that varies is the participant intercept, which is kind of the baseline uh, for each participant. But this is the best we can do uh, with this particular data set. But it's not a problem because actually there's nothing going on. You know, so it's not the case that we have to worry that we've got effects that may or may not be false positive. There's actually nothing going on in our data set. And that's entirely consistent with what we saw when we were looking at the um, descriptive statistics. Um, one difference between uh, generalized mixed models uh, when we're building these binomial models and the linear mixed models is rather than get a t-statistic for our parameter estimates, we simply get a z-value. But you interpret things in exactly the same sort of way. So there's not much going on there at all. And if we're actually to take a closer look at our data, we realize, well, actually, we don't have a huge amount of data to begin with. Um, and if we look at the distribution of trials where we've got zeros and trials where we've got ones, um, we have about three times as many trials where we have zero regressions relative to there being a regression. So I've just done a little bit of extra grouping here. So I'm taking my uh, data frame, tidied regressions data, I'm grouping by condition and DV, uh, and then I'm just giving uh, asking for summary statistic on the number of cases uh, for each of these two combined. So you can see for the negative condition, there are 140 trials where we have no regressions, 46 trials where we do have regressions. For the neutral data, for the neutral condition rather, we've got 133 trials where we don't have regressions, only 48 where we do have regressions, and it's the same sort of pattern for the positive condition too. So we've got a very sort of, um, you know, we don't have actually much data here. We don't have much evidence of regressions happening really at all. Um, so our data set is pretty, pretty impoverished. Um, I should say actually, if we if we had found uh, significant um, differences here, so if we had found that some of our, you know, conditions seem to differ from some of our other conditions, or if we had say even a factorial design we'd follow those significant um, differences up in exactly the same way that we do when we build a linear mixed model. So we can, we'd use the m means function uh, as we've done previously, but we don't have to do that in this case because there's nothing going on. So when we built our linear mixed models, we needed to check some of our model assumptions, uh, primarily to do with the normality of our residuals. Um, with these binomial models, we don't actually need to check for normality of residuals, uh, but we do need to uh, construct what's known as a binned residual plot, um, where we'd expect to find about 95% of our residuals to fall between the two jagged lines, uh, which is exactly what we, what we find in this case. So we can be pretty confident that there's not much going on in our, in our data, because we've built a model um, that's actually not very conservative because it's only got one random effects term and that random effects term is an intercept only random effects term. So we've built a model that's not conservative. Uh, we've satisfied the assumptions of building the binomial uh, model uh, and we're not seeing anything really coming out in our data set. So it's important to uh, just remember to check these assumptions as well. Uh, so that's a sort of relatively brief overview of uh, how we build um, a model, when a generalized linear model for modeling binomial data. If you uh, have a look at the next bit of the worksheet, you'll actually see um, you know, the code for building this model. So have a wee go yourselves uh, at building that binomial generalized mixed model and play around with that. Uh, before we move on then to the uh, final part, 
in this session.